Hi beautiful Baylors, this is your B2B Astrology Overview for August 2021. I'm doing it a bit different this time. I'm reading a card for each star sign and I'm using the beautiful Oracle deck, Light of the Sea Oracle deck by Taryn Vasilo. How gorgeous. Let me start shuffling. Now, obviously I'm going to need 12 cards. If they want to flip out, you know, I love it when they flip out. Otherwise, I'm just going to grab 12 from the top and go for it. Um, August is going to be an interesting month for us all. There's a few things to refine, a few things to nut out, so to speak. And you will find that uh, it's smooth sailing, but, but everyone is still shifting, moving and evolving in this new uh, world order. Yeah. So just be aware of that. All righty. So as not to waste anyone's time, let's just pull them from the top. They don't want to flip. That's fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. Done. Let's do this. All right. First card is for Aries. Let's have a look, Aries. This is for August, your overview. Dragonfly spirit. What areas need lightening up in your life? Yeah. Lighten up a little bit. Don't take things so seriously. Trust me, we've all had to take things extremely seriously, would you say, over the last 18 months. Now it's time just to lighten up just a little bit. I feel like the shackles are very slowly, carefully coming off. Uh, everything will be okay. We'll get there, of course. I mean, we always get there. Um, but I need you to lighten up and have a little bit more fun. I feel like there are some things for you that you are taking a little bit more seriously. And, and I need you to step back from that seriousness and loosen up a little bit. I love the word debauchery. I know people in the US aren't sure what debauchery means. It means to let your hair down, have a whole lot of fun, you know, be a little bit naughty if you have to. But I feel like we do need to feel free again somewhat. All right. Taurus. Taurus, for the month of August, your overview, your card, Angel of Emotional Healing. To heal, we must embrace it with calmness and ease. There is no way anyone can heal if they are terrified or in pain. Pain hinders progress. So the less you aren't in pain or mental pain or spiritual pain, the quicker you're going to heal from what you're going through. OK, so I feel like this is going to be a big month for all the bulls, for all the Taurians. August is going to be a big month of literally cracking yourselves open and being emotionally raw because you're going to have situation and circumstances and people come in that will want to push your buttons, trigger you a little bit. OK, Gemini for the month of August. Oh, I love this card. Awareness, allowing the universe to guide you. Trust your vibes at all times. Awareness, trust your gut at all times. I, I say it all the time. Everyone says it all the time. Vibes don't lie. Your gut is your radar. It's your truth serum. Trust your gut. When someone says to you, oh, your gut's wrong, Oh my God, I just want to slap him. So your awareness is going to be heightened, Gems, for the month of August. It is going to be okay. Everything always is okay. Everything always does work out, yeah? But I need you to really trust your gut. You might find you have the wool pulled over your eyes a little bit in August, and that's not nice. Cancer, my gorgeous crab legs, delicious for the month of August. Journey to awakening, signs from spirit, energetic upgrades, ooh, and a new way of being. I like it. It's time to fucking upgrade. We upgrade everything else in our fucking house. Let's upgrade ourselves. It's about time. If you need to lose weight, lose weight. If you need to get mentally fit, fucking do it. Do whatever it takes. Spiritually, book me in. Whatever you need to do, love. Get yourself healthy. Get yourself vibing high. Don't let anyone bring you down this month, yeah? Because you may find it's a little bit like, you know, uh, the gems that, that some people will try and trigger, try and bring you down a little bit. Mm, I cut you down to size. Uh, no, I don't like that. Leo, beautiful Leo, mother of seas. You are encouraged to do what lights you up. The mother of seas, how gorgeous is she? Just beautiful, mother of seas. Do what makes you feel good this month, Leo. 
whatever it is, do what makes you feel good. I know for us in Sydney, we're in a hardcore lockdown for another four weeks, so it will take in uh, the month of August. Uh, but, you know, there is plenty you can do at home or outside that will fill your soul with joy. Virgo, devotion. Can we really be devoted to anything if we are not first devoted to ourselves? Very wise words, Taryn. Very, very wise words. Devotion. Devote time to yourself. You are worthy of it and you deserve it. Okay. Libra, beautiful Libra, butterfly spirit. Are you ready? Change is coming. Be prepared for big changes in August. This could be in all facets of your life. This could be in where you live, the furnishings in your house, yeah, your work, your love life, your relationships, friends, family, co-workers, everything is changing. How you look, you might go for a big overhaul, yeah? Everything is changing. Butterfly energy. I just fucking love it. Use that butterfly energy to keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Yeah, you're going to be A-OK. -okay. We are up to Scorpio Lighthouse. You are the pillar of light. You are the oracle. Ooh, I like it. I have a feeling for August, you guys will be relied upon for your advice, your support, your love, your wisdom. When you guys are really in your zone, of being very, very zen-like. You guys are quite the oracle, quite sage. I have to say quite sage, quite wise. And I like this for Scorpio, love it. Next card, Sagittarius, angel of prosperity. Yes, accepting you are wealthy with love and emotion. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yes, ma'am, we'll take that one, angel of prosperity. Don't we love money? Hell yeah. It's a superpower. Don't ever think it's not. Don't ever go, oh, Mel, you know, money can't buy love. Like, well, it kind of can. If you've got the money, it kind of can. Trust me on that. Um, money can't buy happiness. Bullshit. Try not having money and try paying your bills. Try not worrying about how you're going to pay your bills. Yeah, so the angel of prosperity for my lovely sagey babies is coming to you hard this month in August. For those in the entertainment industry, be prepared some, for some really lucrative deals, unusual deals to cross your desk. All right, really, really good stuff coming up. Now we are, oh, we're in the home stretch, Capricorn. I like this one, Capri babies, shadow, releasing ties from the past, explore and embrace your shadow self. We've all got a dark side. I can scream like a horror movie. Yeah, I can get, I can get so worked up, I go silent. Nothing escapes. Teresa, my wife goes, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck, what's happened? What's happened? You are so quiet. It's scaring me. Yeah. So we all have a shadow self. We all have a, a, another side to us. We're not always peaches and cream. Yeah. So don't be frightened of speaking up this month. This blue reminds me of the throat chakra. Don't be afraid to speak up. If you're not happy, you're not happy. Yeah. Get happy. Speak up and vocalize it. Say how you feel, please, for the month of August. Aquarius. Oh, Aquarius. This is my month. Ah, yeah. Dolphin spirit, explore more ways to spark your joy. Yeah, it's kind of true. It's a bit like the other card, lighten up a little bit. What makes me happy? What makes the other aqua babes happy? Do what feels good. If you're around people, situation, experiences and circumstances that make you feel like shit, get rid of them once and for all. Just fuck them off. You don't need to give any notice. You don't need to do anything like that. Just go, oh, done. Cut them where they stand, baby. All right. Make yourself happy for the month of August. And last card, Pisces. Yay. Oh, I like it, Pisces. Alignment. You have been training for this for lifetimes. It's time to put your spiritual needs first. Yes, please, my beautiful little fishies. For the month of August, it is highlighting your spirituality. It's time for you to put you first. Don't worry if your partner, male or female, gay or straight, goes, eh, what are you doing that for? Why are you going and meditating? Why are you burning that candle? Go fuck yourself, because I can. All right, put your spiritual needs first. If you want to do a little workshop, hop on a Zoom course, yeah, do it. If you want to get a fucking reading, do it. No one's stopping you. Enjoy your spirituality. Embrace it. Have fun with it. Don't take it all too seriously. 
All righty, my loves. That was the Zodiac overview for August 2021. I love taking you always beyond the veil and always will. And love, there's nothing but. This is the word to go, yo. go. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you so much to the beautiful Mel of Beyond the Veil for those fabulous star sign readings. We love that so much. Welcome to Hashtag Gaw TV, everybody. It's going to be a great evening. And before we kick things off, please make sure that you like this video. Give us a thumbs up. Make sure that you are subscribed to our channel. And of course, everyone's favorite, click that bell icon to enable notifications. Bye. <laughs> love it. Oh. oh my gosh, not only that, we have the greatest after party ever. The top of the hour at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All Patreon members are included in this. So join us for the after party for getting gro our groove on. So Woo. won't be disappointed. What'd you say? All are welcome. All, All are, welcome. are welcome. I almost <laughs> said that, but I thought I saw I said it the last time. <laughs> that scares me a little bit. It did. I love it so much. But yeah, they make sure you do check out patreon.com so you can see all the amazing perks. It's so much fun that we love to give back to you. But also you can see the full episode because obviously we have our show here. You can see the full episode in visual form um, with zero, well, less edits, right? Yes. Like more and more content. But you can also get that same episode in audio form for free at the Gawcast, Gawcast, where you can listen to all your podcasts. So just download that today. Oh, oh. And you might be able to hear our song, our little intro song in there. Garth That's Summer. catchy. Garth yep. Summer and yep. them. It's what the kids call a bop. You know? It's a bop. Is it a bop? The bop with Chapel Heart. Oh my God. I love it. So much. I love it, love it, love it. And huge shout out to LegacySubs.com, our sponsors, and um, just amazing stuff happening, you guys. It is. It is. All, happening. It is. All, all the amazing things, including Empower. And because of Empower, coming here at the end of the month, you guys, our first guest of the month is none other than the NWA women's champion, Camille. Oh, Woo! Yeah. Stunning. An entire Stunning. month of Empower, and we're kicking it off with the champ herself. Let's get her in here, ladies. Yes. Woo! Hell of a body. Hell of a future. Babe, <laughs> never book your tea. Booker T used to say that. <laughs> Hello! Oh. Gray hair, don't care. Oh, that's pretty. Isn't it? Hello. Oh. Hey. hey, girl. Hey. Hey. Welcome hey, to the Oh, party. my goodness. How, how are you this morning? I'm good. I tried putting this wig on, so we'll see how... Oh, it's a wig? You. <laughs> okay, can you not tell that it's a wig right now? Not at all. Oh, okay, good. No. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that is I'm, gonna, so I'm awesome. gonna get it like properly installed because the corners are coming up and stuff, but I wanted to see if it looked like okay. So it was, it was a test. It's a it's test. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, well, and, and this is actually fitting. We always start our show and you can start first what you're drinking and what you're wearing. I am wearing a wig, number one. All right. And then, <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking coffee and I'm wearing a something that says snuggle Aww. because Aww. I like to snuggle. Yeah. Is, is, is that your coffee cup say Team Bride there? Yes, I got it. When I, I was like, we got engaged and then I was in uh, TJ Maxx a couple days later and I saw it and I was like, okay, well, I'm almost Team Bride now. So yeah. <laughs> congratulations on your engagement that's fantastic oh, yay for love you. thank you yes. oh my goodness you. mickey you go next you go next what you drinking what uh, you wearing oh man me i'm drinking coffee as well so welcome to the coffee club and Ooh. i'm wearing my lady boss t-shirt from miss drita from um is it mob wives oh mm -hmm. uh, drita yes i know drita i remember that show <laughs> yes so She's so cool. I only met her. I, you know, I don't watch real a lot of reality television. I know I'm the only one here that really doesn't do that. But I met her. I know. I met her at a comic con, and she gave like I, I got her T-shirt. I was like, she was so freaking cool. And so now I follow her on Instagram, and she's very entertaining. Why she doesn't have her nice. own show? I think that we all need to do a show with her because I think it would be very great. We gotta yeah, have her like on. Yeah. spin off. Ooh. Yeah, she's so totally funny. little crooked, little crooked. <laughs> Part of, part of the family, part of the family. Part of the, part of the Isn't that family. what they say? That's what they say. 
<laughs> little crooked. You go next. You go next. Oh, well, yeah. I'm so glad you asked, Lisa. I am not drinking coffee. It's uh, early evening for me here in the U Kizzle, and I am drinking a lovely glass of rose. This is the palm by Ooh. Whispering Angel, and I got a huge shipment of it. Yes, hashtag blessed. And it is delightful and refreshing, and I'm wearing a little bit of Zara. I, I knew the champ oh. was coming, and I wanted to wear something fancy in, in honor of our guest. Yeah. Oh, appreciate you. What is your oh, wine that's glass? So My wine yeah. glass says, looks like a beauty, drinks like a beast. Yes. <laughs> and it's true. Didn't, uh, didn't your best friend Aaron get you that? Erin, who hopefully could be in the chat room. We don't know. Hello to all of our chat room guests. Uh, yes, she got this for me and it is very apropos. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I am, I'm, I'm double fisting. I am drinking uh, a little, since you said you poured yourself a glass of wine, I poured a little bit of wine and then I'm drinking um, coffee as well. Death Wish Coffee, one of our other sponsors, um, has, has a warning label, three times the caffeine. So be careful. One cup does it. It's great for before workouts. I'll tell you that. I'll oh, tell you awesome. that, and I'm, and I'm wearing um, make kimchi, not war. Um, you, you know how I love uh, it's my pajama. I'm wearing my pajamas, you guys. This is it's it's really early my time. You know I'm way behind you guys. Oh, Big shit. shout out to, to to Gail Kim and Lena Yada. We love and are obsessed with kimchi. Mm. Well, and she is one of my favorite drag queens as well. Kimchi first. I, yes, I, I know. What? Yeah. yeah okay. She sings a lovely song called Fat, Femme, and Asian. I, I highly <laughs> recommend downloading it. Yeah. I got to yeah. download it. She's amazing. I got to download it. You have I was going to gonna say Gail Kim. I was going to say Gail Kim. I don't know if you guys saw um, on Twitter the other day. Uh, I called her hashtag Goat Kim. Go and goat why Kim. there is not Goat Kim merchandise? We need to make... I want to see like a little baby goat with um, them in like the Eat Defeat. Like a little baby Yes. Goat. And like, just like this little baby goat in Gail Kim gear. A cute goat, no. obviously. Yeah. Cute, yeah. You know? yeah. Maybe the Gail. Merch. She's got him. Gail merch, baby. Gail. I got you. <laughs> yeah. We got you. And you know, remember, remember her old finish when she would tangle you up like that? Like a, a, AJ uh, Lee took it. Yeah. Yeah. We called it the happy ending, but <laughs> WWE wouldn't let us call it happy ending. I don't know. Uh, we were all that, Lisa. <laughs> Isn't that cute though? It's, it's hilarious. It's graphic. It's Just vulgar. Like Maybe it's like vulgar, the, but the less happy ending. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Well, speaking of empowering women, this is the month of empower, and we're so glad to have the champ here to kick us off for the month of empower. But Camille, in case the fans have been living under a rock, can you tell us about your career thus far and how you got into wrestling to begin with? Well, I got into wrestling because when I graduated college, I had, you know, the normal jobs and I realized like, wow, this really sucks. I don't like this at all. And I, I moved back home for a little bit. And I, like me and my dad, we went to an indie show in the boondocks in the middle of nowhere. And it was absolutely terrible. And but I had a blast. I was like laughing the whole time and just really enjoying myself. And I woke up the next morning and I was like, holy shit. Why have I never thought about this? Like I grew up watching wrestling. And, you know, I, in high school and stuff, I stopped watching it and everything. So I never was like, I never watched it thinking, oh, I'm going to be a wrestler. I just watched it and enjoyed it. But yeah. I woke up and I was like, I can be a wrestler. Like I used to act back in the day. I've always played sports and it's like, you know, those worlds combine. And I was like, shoot, let me try it. And so I Googled how to become a professional wrestler and I found a school, started training in 2016. And here we are. What's wow. Like, thank God for Google. I mean, there's some things we don't thank God for Google for, but they, yeah. there's times when it comes through. Yeah, well, I laugh does. when I say that, but it's like wrestling is such a niche like world. And if you don't know anybody in it, how the like, how do you get into this weird world? Like, you know what I'm saying? So I just yeah. had to Google it because I knew nothing, nothing about it. Yeah, yeah. So I did the same I thing, Camille. I Googled pro wrestling school when they contacted me. I was yeah. like, what the hell? You guys, oh, you see me wrestle. <laughs> Shit. oh my god yeah. yeah and i thought i can learn it in 30 days was i wrong oh yeah yeah i mean i just thought always being i mean a lot of people do too it's been like just being a natural athlete my whole life i just thought okay that's gonna be super easy to pick up and i mean while i probably pick it up a little bit easier than others it's definitely 
it don't matter if you're good at sports when it comes to wrestling. You know yeah, I mean? it doesn't. But like you said, the cool thing is, and that's what I really loved about it too, was like there was acting involved and it's, you know, it's, it's very flamboyant and fun, almost like theater. But yeah. what were you watching that really got you hooked? Was it WWE? Were you watching old tapes? Like who did you like and what were you watching? Yeah, WWE kind of during the Attitude Era. I really loved Edge and Lita and the Hardy Boys. Those are, they were my jam. Maurice, you know, they were my jam. Yeah, and Maurice. Maurice is a random throw in there. I know Maurice is right because I love when she flipped her hair and did the this. I was like, yes. Yeah, she was. She had like that that bitchy, but I love that that sort of sassy like mean. Yes. Girl. I love that. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I remember. I remember we were at a show in Raleigh. What was it called then? It was called the RBC Center at the time, and yeah. um, and my my dad's work friend's son was with us, and I was sitting beside him at the show. And the only time he spoke up the whole time was when Maurice came out. And he was like, "That's what I'm talking about," you know. What I'm <laughs> and it was so funny. She suits all tastes. Let's be honest. Yeah. And she's literally stunning, right? In oh person, her and Kelly Kelly, their skin. You just, I always stare at them. I'm like, there has to be something wrong with their skin. Something's <laughs> wrong with them. I would try to pick them apart, but they're freaking perfection. Beautiful, yeah, yeah totally. Beautiful, beautiful girl. Until Camille came along. Bam. Yeah. Oh, Bam. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mickey, you mentioned Empower, and this is the yes. month of Empower. We are gearing up for this huge monumental event. First of all, Camille, how excited were you to have Mickey come in and just basically kick ass, if you will, and yes. really get the females all riled together? That must have been very exciting. Well, I was just super excited to have Mickey in the locker room because, well, like, she knows it all and she's the best ever and so to have her and because I mean like we've been friends for a long time but I, like I told Nick this before I never really wanted to talk wrestling with her because you know she's doing that all the time so I feel like the last thing she wanted to talk about was wrestling and I didn't want to be like ah. so I just kind of always put, but now that she's in the locker room and stuff like that I feel like I can you know ask her to like watch my match get critiques from her get you know stuff like that and so just being able to have that now and have that door like open now and we feel comfortable with it is is really nice um at least from, i can't speak you know on the, uh, the other girls but i'm sure they're just as excited so uh i know that's how i feel about it yeah Aww, i love you for saying well that. you've been there done that oh, Mickey. You, you've me. experienced I feel that. I feel that. You, you've experienced so many Mickey, you've experienced so much WWE, TNA. You've been on big platforms. You have a lot of knowledge to share. And I yeah. think people always appreciate listening to that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. and then working towards a camera opposed to just an indie show and working for the fans is completely yeah. night and day. It's different. Oh, it was just so like funny. I was saying, there. like, she yeah. was uh, after one of the matches, she was going through something with me. And, like, obviously, she's not in the ring. She's just backstage in a locker room and she was just explaining something and even the way she was explaining it I was just like looking at her and I was like you're just so good at this like you she's you know, so good I love it uh, like, Mickey yeah. I think yeah we got to get it, I'm telling you like you have you're gonna do so much and I, I just I can just see it because you just have that all of it the presence the look the freaking the natural ability like we didn't even touch on the fact that you used to play football and yeah. that's pretty freaking yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, I just, I think that there's all these, and it's always the little things and it all sometimes like you, you go through your wrestling career and you're pulling information and, and asking people to, you know, give you an input and advice, but not everything always clicks. And sometimes it's just the right way it's said to you Yeah. to yeah, make it sure. click for you. And so you can hear the same thing from 10 different people, but you only really hear it from one or two that were able mm -hmm. to say it in a way that you can understand it or hear it that makes sense to you. But yeah, I feel, because I would always, I would always, if you ever ask me, I'll always, whatever, whatever that opinion is, whatever people think of it is. But I will say that like, I'm always apprehensive to give back feedback or anything. And because I don't always think like, obviously I was talking to you about it because we were having a genuine conversation and stuff yeah. about the match. Yeah. And you had asked me, but I don't just freely give advice because I feel like not everybody actually wants to hear it. Right. Not, and, yeah. and they'll listen to about, a, you know, as you'll, they'll listen to the good stuff. And as soon as you start to give like any type of corrective criticism or anything like that, they stop listening or like they start making excuses. And I'm like, no, no, no. And I was there yeah, too, they, yeah. selective hearing. Right. So I'm just like, but I don't ever want to feel like, oh, I'm just offering up opinions, my opinion, right. because my opinion might not match theirs or the way they were taught or discredit their right. or anything like that. So it's always like this, 
you know, or who does she think she knows, like knows everything about wrestling. But I genuinely only offer it when it's like something where I'm like, they got to know this or I got to. Yeah. Yeah. Then I, I learned the hard way. I learned the hard way. I gave advice because um, I was like, I went to like one of the WrestleManias that had WrestleCon at the same mm-hmm. time, you know, back a while and I was a big fan of this girl and I'm like oh my god I really love her wrestling and I wanted to get her a critique because I wanted to see her make it help help her and out she didn't perceive it very well oh and that Tommy goes really don't ever don't ever go offer to give advice he goes they they should ask if they want to make it they should if we're there they should ask us to watch it and I'm like well I thought I was being nice but I got my head chewed off so I was like yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was shocked. I was shocked. Yeah. I was like, wow, I'm just trying to help. I'm not saying you're terrible. I want to see you make it, you know? Like I had to I had to teach I had to teach Tom how to to critique one of my matches because he's first of all, he's like to me the best wrestler ever. So I I really, you know, his opinion it means a lot to me. And um and but he's also which is great, but he's extremely, extremely, extremely picky. Like even when we watch wrestling here on the TV, like he'll be like, did you see that? And I'm like, I didn't even notice it. You know what I'm saying? And like, <laughs> yeah. he's so picky. And so when he watches my stuff, he used to just go in on every single thing wrong. And, and like, and then I was like, okay, this is how you got to do it. Please tell me something that he liked and then tell me, I was like, you got to Oreo it. And then tell me the critique and then Oreo end it with it. something else that you, that you like. A compliment yeah, yeah. sandwich. It's from Family yeah. Guy, right? Compliment yeah. sandwich. Yes, mm. that's how you got to do it. Because then, then I won't have my feelings hurt so bad. <laughs> yeah, and then you'll think like, well, I'm the shit, so I should just quit. Look at all that stuff I did wrong. Why am I a wrestler? Because exactly. you start becoming really too does. down on yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Watch yeah. It's like I'm already hard enough on myself, and then if someone else is saying all this, you know, bad stuff, it's just like, well, I'm the fucking worst. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You. You. Must, yeah. We all have done that before, where you're watching wrestling with wrestlers and they they're they're very picky i won't name names but there's wwe wrestlers that will watch they'll go i don't watch raw i don't want to pick up bad habits and it's like wait what because they're so picky yes nick i'm sure is like that mickey when he watches wrestling it's almost like if you were an actor going to a play like of course you're going to pick things apart yeah i say it's it's hard uh, you know and i watch wrestling i mean i've freaking been watching wrestling for so long at this point and it was it's almost like I wish I could still just watch it as a fan sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's really taken because I've I've studied it and and watched so much like tapes and just studied and studied and studied. So now I'm the same way. Like it's terrible to I just I find it where I'm watching like this. <laughs> Cause I just like I'm just like, why would they do that? Or why did they do that there? Why did they just take off running like his leg is hurt? Uh, like all these little things I'm going like psychology things which were yeah. drilled into me for so so I can't escape that habit so when it just doesn't make sense to me I'm just going like well that's yeah what do we that's do? and when they do like 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 a power like a pile drive at the beginning you're like well what what the hell are you gonna do next well, but I can't well, this is why I, I, I don't is, I don't there's know. nothing to do like how are you gonna I get that high love wrestling so it's like i'm amazed by like a lot of things and it's just like but i can watch this amazing match and then this one hokey like one bullshit kind of you know one thing can go like oh <laughs> the whole thing but i did say, we we all watch it it's hard to watch it because then you're perfect and you'll find kaylee the more that you're in it because how long have you been wrestling now 2016 uh, well you know the 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 story it was on and off so i like uh, I started the Indies in 2017. I trained for a year and then uh-huh. I did about seven months or so. And then I was a hopeless romantic. So I gave up wrestling for that basically. And, um, and then, but so I did like seven football then were you playing football then? I, I, I did football. Fo- it wasn't like just lingerie football. You guys, she really was like in football. Yeah. Football contact. Yeah. Football. yeah. Oh. yeah. It, it was, yeah. um, I actually did the football before, um, I did the seven months like of my indies because I wanted yeah. my indie character to be a football player. Right. And I was oh, like, well, I gotta make I it legit. Been awesome. I went and played football because I was like, it needs to be legit, you know? Right. Um, so I took a break from wrestling to play football, then come back to the indies. Then I thought I was done with wrestling forever. And then NWA October 2018 is when I came back. So that's the thing. Like I've had, I think around, I've got, I've had less than like 50 matches. So. Yeah. And wow. is, is the champion now. 
And a hell of a champion. That's impressive. A hell of a champion. And they always say, though, and you guys both know, former champions, that like everyone goes, okay, well, I'm the champion now, and that's it. No, that's when the target is on your back. And so we want to shift back to the empower, uh, the impending empower. There we yes! go. Uh, we did, there was a promo that you did, and you were talking about how you're looking for opponents everywhere. Are, are yeah. there some that you can tell us that, like, like, that stick out in your mind, some that you think are worthy opponents yes. that you've had your eye on? Yeah, I need to know this, answer this question, because Kaylee, you know, I saw that you had your title defense against Miss Kenzie Page, which you yes. know, I, love little, I love little Kenzie. Yes. Uh, but, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, I, I just wrestled Kenzie. You had that one but I wrestled you know, Amber Nova. Your opponent. We haven't announced Oh, I love her too. Amber Nova. She's great. Amber Nova. Yeah. I wrestled her, what was it? What's, what's today? I wrestled her on Sunday. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh wow. In San Antonio. Um, but of course, like watching WWE, I see like Rhea Ripley and I'm like, that would be badass. That would be a badass match, stuff like mm -hmm. that. With NWA, I feel like um, Kylie Ray, I feel like she would be a very, very worthy opponent. She's athletic. She played softball herself. So two softball oh. players going at it. Ooh, yeah. I'm trying to think of other companies. There, There's this, there's this girl and I feel like it would be... <laughs> I don't know how it would go, but just uh, Max the Impaler, Impaler, she's, she's just, yeah, she's a big, scary, scary girl, and I feel like that would be... She's in the Ring of Honor tournament right now, isn't she? she yes. The tournament? Yeah. Yes. Um, Kiara yeah. Hogan. Kiara Hogan is I definitely know. someone that I would like to wrestle. So, yeah, that's a few of them. Yeah. Okay. I like that you're up for a challenge. She could have been picking that. like some scary ass women. I love that. Yeah. Well, they're, I did they're, too. All different. they're all so different. That's, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. I think it's amazing what you've been able to do just in three years on television to go from this like very stoic, silent character as you've like grown and the people really fell in love with you on television. You said that you were going to be looking for an opponent and that you were looking for a challengers for the championship. And so I'm just curious because I still, I said that the NWA Women's Championship would be defended on Empower. Yes. And do you know, Miss Camille, do you know that, um, you know, do you know that the winner of that match will then go on and wrestle the next night? So you could potentially have two championship matches back to back. Yeah, that's how I did. That's what you got to do. You got to defend the championship. So I'm, I'm down. It's all good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God, I love the confidence. <laughs> I know. Oh, <laughs> I'm curious. Yeah, I'd go. I'm what? also like, you know what's it's crazy? Like, you know, Camille, like, I wasn't a good speaker, like, on the mic at all. I didn't like to talk. I was the action girl. And they were like, you need to work on your promos. So I go, you guys should have made me train, like, to work on promos. You know, I wasn't a talk. I was the ass kicker and so right. to talk you can see some of my promos i'm holding the mic going like this <laughs> it's shaking oh my god i hated it i hate talking i didn't like it i was like yeah like, just uh, yeah it was, it was that's hard. what's actually funny about practicing. having the the silent role is because i don't have a problem with talking and so like i would see sometimes people were like oh they're probably having her silent because she can't cut a promo i'm like bitch what <laughs> <laughs> watch watch but uh, I am, I do find that I, I like more, because I've told Nick this before, like a straight camera in my face, it's just me. I have to cut like a dry promo, not really a huge fan of. I can do it, just not really a huge fan of. But the studio wrestling with the audience you get to play off of, and especially if I'm cutting a promo and like the person I'm cutting it on or something is right there, like I thrive in that. That's what I, I really like that type of stuff. So I got to work more on like the just, you know, straight down the lens camera, like, you know, the use for later type of promo, like a live off the cuff type of interaction stuff. I really like. What do you guys like? What do you prefer Mickey and Lisa as far as like a big crowd or would you rather just film like a, you know, sometimes they'll go, okay, even I've had to do it as a, as a valet slash manager. They'll go, can you send us like a 30 second to a minute video yeah. of just you and your phone? Does that freak you out? Or you prefer to have fans there? Fans always. Really? I think mean, that fans and if there's a person in the ring that we can bounce back and all because I feel like that's when genuine chemistry and stuff happens. But I will say the art of perfecting the down the lens in the mirror. That's what yeah. I did. 
yeah. promo after promo after promo in the mirror, like just like talking. And then when I could feel like I believed it myself and I'm like, okay, I'm getting there. But I, it's, those are like, I get in my heart about it. I'm like, oh, you know? Yeah. 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 I, I'm not a big fan of looking at the lens either. And also back in my day, back in my day, I'm fucking old, dude. Um, uh, it uh, is, we never looked at the lens. Don't look at the camera. Don't look at the camera. Cut the promo. And I like interaction like backstage, like when we're getting an altercation and we go off on each other and you can just feed off of each other. You know what I mean? But the fans are easier, but you're like, oh my God, I got to get this right because they're going to shit on it. Like if I, if I F up, they're going to yeah. let me know I F up and it's going to screw me up on my promo out yeah. in the fans. I'm just an action girl, you know, you know, give me a cameo. I can wish somebody a happy birthday you're right. to go like, but, but to be little uh, an opponent and you're like, ah, how do I, how deep do I go? I don't, don't really want to offend this person, but you, you know what I mean? You don't want to go, you know, it's a fight. Oh, girl. That that's kind when, of that's you know, when it's almost nice to be like friends with the person friend. because you know you can just go in on each other and it's no big deal. But it's like when there's actually a little bit of heat, it's kind of like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And you're like, oh, yeah. am I going to get, am I going to get hit in the face? <laughs> I mean, that fans have never asked for cameos of you as like a heel and like cut a promo and like tell me I'm going to kick your ass. Like, because even I get that and I'm not even a wrestler. They'll go, oh, yeah, can you be a heel? And I'm like, well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can. I've been dying oh, to be a heel. Yeah. <laughs> but don't they do that on cameo or like haven't they uh, like ever asked for like Lisa at like I'm I'm your opponent and can you cut a promo? They me? Yeah, yeah, they yeah, they, they did. I, I actually um I screen capped it and I sent it um to ODB and Melina. I go, is this guy I can read this what he wants me to say. It was like verbatim. Like, I was like, I'm not good with scripts. Just give me bullet points. But he wanted me to say that I would beat every girl in WWE, hands down. I would widow speak everybody. And I'm like, okay, this clip is going to be shown on social media. And the girls are going, bitch, get in the ring with me. Because yeah. those girls now, the way they work, they can run circles around me. Their cardio and their, their endurance is so... Do you know what I mean, though, Mickey? It's like they work a different style. I'm slow and like I like to stalk my prey. I'm not like yeah, boom, boom, like boom, 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 boom. That's the difference. Well, I'm the same way. Yeah. So, so I, I'm the same way. I don't, I like, I always say there's, I feel like, well, you said that, Lisa, and these are the things that we've steered away from that I, that is kind of like taken my emotional investment out of the product a little bit. I miss cutting a promo down the lens where you're talking to him like this. Like, I miss that. I love that. I love, I don't like that. Oh, don't break. The I, I think that for wrestling, wrestling is so different and we can do whatever the hell we want, That I don't feel like there should just randomly be a camera there while we're having a conversation. I think if there's a camera there, it's because I'm fucking talking to people at home. Yeah. Right. Like I also think that there's times to do the flippy shit and then there's times to slow it down. And there's times I hate 50, 50 booking. I hate um, people who don't sell. I hate it with a passion. I fucking, I, sorry. I hate it. I hate if you only register or you think, Oh, I can't sell. Cause it's going to make me look weak or, Oh, I can't tap out because that's going to make me look weak or, Oh, I can't do this. If you say I can't and because it's going to make me look weak, I'm immediately like you are not a, a wrestler. You are yeah. just out there to get yourself over and do your shit and that's it. And that's fine. But that doesn't belong in like storytelling, emotional investment. It, that's not even how people get to watch like soap operas or the drama. It's the drama that keeps people connected and, mm -hmm. 50 50 zero like everybody's the same is not drama it, period yeah. no yeah. it's like i agree that's it. i think wrestling's that's taking it. a few too many cues Sorry. from reality tv nowadays yeah that was good Mick. i liked it we were along for that ride wow <laughs> i'm actually shocked though like has people said like i'm gonna tap out tap out i can't tap out or i i can't lose it's gonna make me look weak to you um, not necessarily to me, uh, um, you over here wrong. I've said like, Oh, I don't really want to tap out to something. If it's not an established thing, or if that person's not a stat, like if it's, if it's not, a, if it's an established finisher, 
I will. I have zero. It's not like an ego thing. It's more of like where it makes sense in like the story. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. gotcha. I get if it's like some rookie that's coming in and then you're like, you know, whatever. Like, I feel like I've been in that position for sure more than once of like, I want to be able to help build this person, but I also don't want the fans to shit on it if they were to do something to me where the people aren't, cause they're just seeing this person, you know, really active on the roster. Like let's build them and make them look credible. And then they can I agree. Have, have zero. I think it's zero quarrels on um, losing. It's all in how you lose, but anyone like, yeah, I, I've seen people go in there and gobble up their opponent because they feel like, Oh, it's just gonna, I don't want to, you know, it's going to make me look weak. And I'm like, well, here's the thing is that if, if you don't make your opponent, then you've literally beaten no one. So Nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the point? Like, you have to make every person that you step in there with look like somebody. So that way, especially if you're going to beat them or they're going to beat you, you have to make them look like somebody so they looked credible to do so. You know what I mean? So by yeah. like going into business for yourself, it doesn't do anything for anybody. It doesn't do anything for your character or the story or anything. It's just a waste of television time for me. Yeah. Psychology, psychology, hashtag psychology, wrestling right. psychology. I'm old. <laughs> Apparently I'm old. No, I'm, no, but yeah, you gotta be a team player. School. You have to be a company guy in a bad way, but you have to look at the overall picture. And I, I remember even just me totally removed from actually being a wrestler you know, tag teams that I won't name that were in impact wrestling for years that would just be so pissed off. They had to lose or, Oh, we don't want to look at all these things. And it was like, but they didn't really see the bigger picture. They were always just boo-boo face all the time. The you end, know? They don't see the end goal. Like, okay. No. So I always ask like, where is it going? And let's work backwards because then you right. can build that kind of thing. But yeah. the whole boo-boo face over, like, I think that somewhere along the way that people um, like they, some people like they forget that it's an art form and that it's a show and it's a Ooh. thing, you know what I mean? Like they get so wrapped up in their own hype. It's almost like they're more of a mark for themselves than they are the actual business. Oh, that's a, that's a big thing, yeah. Oh yeah, that's it like, is a big thing. You know, and it's like, yeah. I was always a mark for the business and the story and all these things. So it's like just a weird switch. And, I, and I'm not bearing, I don't mean to like bury, it's not like this is a, across the board, yeah, yeah. but I think that it's something that is filtered more and more into, you know, the, the today's longer, wrestling yeah today's wrestling I, I wouldn't have had a career i wouldn't have had a career if i said oh i don't want to lose <laughs> most of my career i freaking i said we should um sell the bottom of my shoe to some sponsors so i can make some money at least you know what i mean yeah, at the same time i'm losing i like yeah i would never say go back like i don't agree you know you always did i always did what i was told you know yeah yeah, yeah. We know everyone here is so excited for Empower. We've got all of the info in the YouTube description, but let the fans know where they can find you on social media and uh, how excited are we for Empower, ladies? This is, it's getting- Super good. excited. Yes. Uh, so I just have an Instagram basically and I'm there at Camille with a K, Brick House. She's a brick. The brick. How? Well, what's funny is I just, because they, my name, Billy made it Camille, just one word. And I was like, well, on Instagram, I can't be, there's already like a Camille. So I was like, I need something. So I, I was like, I'm a brick house. So I put Camille brick house, but now people think that's like my full wrestling name, Camille brick house. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's just Camille. <laughs> but Hi, this is I like Camille the brick house though. Yeah. I like the brick house though. Yeah. It. it suits you well. Yeah. Well, cheers to the champ. Cheers to a full cheers month of Empower. We're going to be talking about it all month long here on Gaw TV. Everyone subscribe. Head over to Patreon. We're going to start our Zoom after party. Everyone's invited at the top of the Yay! hour. And we'll see you there. Camille, best wishes. I will yes. Thank you guys so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! She's a brick. <laughs> this is the word. Go, yo, go.